We start off with the hat wearing samurai jackass looking protagonist on his way into a diner. As he sits, some amputated goody two shoes called Ringo takes his order. Also in the diner, we got this loser, Hatchman the Flesh Trader, with his two eyes bossing our poor old boy and showing some low dick energy when he flushes his gun. Our MC ain't having none of that as he steps up to defend Ringo. Turns out protagonist has been following Hachi because of the gun he uses and its foreign origin. Apparently, he bought it from this guy called Haiji Shindo. Remember that name, we'll come back to it. MC leaves and Ringo quits his job to follow him without even thinking oh by the way the mc is mizu so yeah let's call her mizu from now on then we get this flashback of mizu as a kid and how he was bullied for having blue eyes i mean come on seriously racism racism has been around for this long out of nowhere this comet comes crashing and saves her from near death and this blind on man let's call him sword father who scoops up the rock and off they go and apparently adopts him cut back to present day mc reaches kyoto and is looking for shindo's dojo which he finds quite easily on his way he stumbles upon princess akemi who's on her way to apologize to her father because she doesn't want to marry some loser but instead this giga child looking undefeated tiger with a 24 and no win streak mizu reaches the dojo and receives quite a welcome cut to another flashback and you see him remember the ways of the shindo ryu by a disciple of the dojo who visited sword father and we get to see how their bond developed through their bonding we get a glimpse of his history and why he's of mixed race apparently his mom was raped by one of the four white men who are weapon traders in early japan and, and he's on a quest to kill them all then we get this epic training montage with some Kill Bill score between him and this guy back to the dojo and he goes on a bazaar killing anyone on his path until he can speak to the master after killing some jobbers who use the Shindo Ryu fighting technique which he easily mastered and in comes the boss villain Taigen remember Taigen the guy princess Akemi wanna pipe so badly also Taigen the kid from the protagonist Chaludu who used to bully as a kid in Kohama village nice glow up huh so the two start fighting and then we get some next level fight choreography that will put Mappa and Ufotable to shame shout out to the animators we love you for a minute it looks like taigen is about to win and add another w on his streak until the mc finally gets serious and uses his real blade forged by master ag yeah that's uh that's his name by the way and boom whoops his ass so bad almost gives him the final blow until dojo master stops it asks where he could find haiji shindo to which he quickly tells him not so giggle chat piece of shit taigen scoops his first l and mizu leaves the dojo to nurse his injuries oh by the way we learned that mizu has been a chick all along I mean, come on, by this point, you already know. I mean, serious, I man, who the fuck did she think she was fooling with this Yudororo ass looking Odin wannabe Yamato looking ass piece of shit? So the episode ends with the four fangs, some sort of hitman, I guess, order to kill her because everyone in this dojo was too much of a pussy to face her. Episode 2 starts with the four fangs on their way to hunt down Mizu and, and first up is the diner where it all started and massacre everyone in there. Cut to MC and Ringo walking through the forest and boy this fat ass is so needy. MC tries everything to get rid of Ringo but that ain't happening. Also Taigen is nursing his wounds and shame after the defeat from Mizu and we get to see Princess Akemi comforting him by giving him a quickie. Shout out to the animators once again. I mean we love you man. So post night clarity kicks in and Akemi says fuck the marriage as he goes to seek revenge oh boy this gets interesting mizu leaves a rather obvious trail making it easier for taigen to follow and also the four fangs back to the village mizu and ringo split up since the boats don't leave until the morning she goes to train we cut to another flashback of mizu as a kid now in her teens we get to see all sword master ag finally let her make her first blade before this she only made kitchen knives mizu learns the way of the sword by watching this guy train his name is blood soaked chiaki <laughs> And apparently his whole story about being a bookmaker was mega BS. All he wanted was to sell a fortune from a blade made by Sword Master. Cut back to the present day and Mizu is seen training as Taigen finally caught up with her and watches from the shadows. Princess Akemi, now manless after not so giga child, chooses to redeem his own instead of marrying her. He's all angry and shit until Seki, her guardian, tells her to get her shit together and go present herself to her father, Lord Daichi. <laughs> She thought this was a normal interaction and until she realized she's been engaged to Ito Takayoshi behind her back. Pissed off, she almost vents her father brags how she's a virgin without knowing she got piped just a day before and how that plays out. In summary, Akira's getting married in 5 days, she's traveling to Edo and she must be in full bride makeup with a black teeth. I don't know, that's some weird Japanese shit they do in weddings. So she tries escaping. Seki tries talking her out of it which fails and he concedes and joins her. Back to Ringo who's sampling every noodle in town and realizes how much of a crap 
cook he was. Up the hill, Lisa was meditating on how she'll get her revenge until boom, the four fangs sneak up on her. Simultaneously down the hill, everyone goes butt naked for some weird festival, being reborn. Shout out to the animators. Someone really drew all these naked bodies for this one shot. Let that sink in. Cross cut between this epic fight scene and this straight out of midsummer type of bullshit. And holy mother fucking is this fight epic the angles the storytelling but guess who the boss villain among us the four fangs was yep this asshole still fighting with that broken sword that she made the fight was brief but the storytelling was got here Mizu almost lost because she got distracted however managed to one-up him by a quick draw move how convenient and easy and so the destruction was Tygen angry and wants to regain his honor challenges her to a duel but she collapses before it even starts because I mean she just fought four guys episode ends with Ringo winning his cult games Mizu killing the four fangs and Tygen lifting his sword about to strike her if you are liking this recap so far, mind pausing the video for a quick subscribe? It helps the channel a lot, so... DO IT! It starts off with Mizu as an infant and how she narrowly escaped death. Pretty dark stuff. Quickly cut to where we left off, Tygen about to take a swing at Mizu which he fails to do. Ringo comes to rescue her and Tygen suggests he takes her up the shrine at the mountain. She falls in and out of consciousness as we see her past childhood. We cut back to Shindo Dojo and Abija Fowler, by the way, this is the main antagonist. <laughs> receives word that the four fangs have all died at the hands of the blue-eyed devil and we get some generic edgy villain outburst. Abija Main's goal is to gain control of the shogunate. I think that's what they call cities in ancient Japan. His goal seems to go off course because news of me is with tracking him to eliminate him keeps distracting him. Fowler and Eiji Shindo are business partners who trade in illegal fire <laughs> However, Fowler has been confined for ages in Tanabe Island and only allowed to live once during the Spring Mitsuri. However, no one can know he exists as that was the agreement. Back at the hills, Taigen and Mizu sign off on a contract when Mizu finishes her revenge quest. She owes him a rematch for a duel to regain his honor at the dojo and his wife. <laughs> anyway, in three days, that's how long we gotta wait. So this big ass bald guy appears with a letter from Haiji Shindo inviting Mizu for tea which obviously is a trap. I mean, come on, anyone can see that. Taigen disputes it since she's clearly injured and he wants her at 100% but chooses to go anyway. Back to the pampered princess Akemi. Still escaping till out of nowhere, her convoy gets attacked by some brigands and gets robbed everything. So bitch has to hitch a ride to Mihonoseki after Taigen and has to sit beside a pile of shit. Elsewhere, Taigen and Mizu still on their way to meet Haiji Shindo. We get to learn some backstory about Taigen. He had an abusive father and tries to forget anything about Kohama. It's night time and they take a break on their journey. However, this leads to some back and forth teasing since they clearly hate each other and a small fight happens. Through the fight, we learn how Taigen and his female friends burn down Mizu's home, killing her mother and Mizu almost wins the fight but her injuries were just too severe. So the next day, they finally reach at the supposed entrance to Haiji Shindo and Taigen insists on accompanying Mizu. Also, Princess Akemi ride to Mihonoseki ended up being a dud since the ride the hitch tripped them off. Akemi learns that all along it was Seki who organized their marriage to the shogun. Pissed off, she storms into a nearby brothel. Here she pretends to be some high-end hooker just to piss off Seki. Somehow she convinces this creep to take his horse and travel to Mihono Seki as poor old Seki watches from afar. Back to the cave, Tanzo Taiga and Mizu actually ended up having tea with Haiji Shindo. We get to learn that this guy is actually a cunning and smart businessman and negotiator. He tries bribing Mizu with a lot of gold and even a major title to rule over Sendai but obviously she declines. Haiji Shindo actually did anticipate her saying no so he offers a second proposal to help get in the castle. Turns out Haiji Shindo after all wants to end his partnership with Foul as we learn it's preventing him from doing business cause you know he's white and he hates him. Mizu notices Fowler's corset is skillfully cut and comments about it. Remember this part. However Mizu doesn't like the plan at all and tells him to go fuck himself which in turn triggers an ambush of over 500 archers towards them. Through skill and luck aka it's lazy writing they escape with the help of Ringo. So Mizu now has a way to enter the castle since this guy literally spilled everything. She knocks at Taigen and proceeds alongside Ringo. Taigen gets kidnapped immediately he comes to and they plan to torture information out of him. This episode ends with Haiji Shindo giving Abija Fowler a heads up that she is coming. 
Episode starts with the servant lacing Mizu's drink with something. We cut to the opening and we see Mizu and Ringo walk through the streets of a new town where a death duel is happening. Mizu marvels at how fluent the execution was. Out of nowhere, Mizu insists that she needs to go to a brothel and demands to see one Madame Kaji, who apparently is the owner of that establishment. The Lord Bailey should that remember this guy. She finally arrives and we get a lot of stoic and woman's plain. I'm sure you don't want to hear. So Madame Kaji takes Mizu to a very secluded part of the brothel where Sam will weird BDSM stuff happens. Aira is obviously seems to be for the highest paying clients as she likes to call it peculiar taste and gay stuff. Obviously I can't show it here but you get the point. They finally settle and Madame Kaji asks for Mizu's desires. She picks up a paper and writes what she wants. Apparently all she ever wanted was to gain access to Abija's Fowler's chambers. She tells her everything she knows about the arrangement and alluded to exacting revenge for her on Haiji Shindo by severing his right hand because obviously she had a feeling that Shindo used to abuse her. We cut to Madame Kaji and Mizu walking through the streets and she narrates how everything is controlled by Boss Hamata. Rules with an iron fist with his uh, a thousand claw army. Kaji offers a deal. Kill Kinuyo, her favorite worker with some real Mr. backstory in exchange for granting Mizu's big ask. Killing Kinuyo will be easier because then it puts her out of her misery. We get to Akemi's homestead, Tonokubu clan, where her father is approaching her chambers about the planned wedding with, with some Kama Sutra stuff, only to realize that she's escaped. Then we see Akemi Mihonoseki asking stranger to stranger about her husband. This is short lived because immediately we see her father soldier was rolling up looking for her. So Taigen is now getting tortured by Haiji Shindo and Fowler to give up Mizu which doesn't seem to work. Fowler leaves cause he got bored by it and ends up in a chapel specifically built for him. He then mockingly says a prayer before he leaves. Princess Akemi finally reaches Mihonoseki specifically to the village where Mizu is and quickly locates her in a duel as she was wearing Taigen's scarf. So Goro and Princess Akemi follow Mizu to Madame Kaji's brothel and her plan is to sell herself as a whole so she can get close to Mizu. So Goro, this guy over here. Madame Kaji being the pro at her job immediately smells her out to be an actual princess so she offers to buy her for 50 yo after she proves to be of use. She meets up with the other geishas and everyone is in awe that an actual princess is amongst them and for her first client she gets this fat ass looking ugly bum. And here's the funny part Princess Akemi is actually good at it. She manages to turn on this fat ass with some poetry. Yeah, now I'm making this up she actually turns him on with some poems. She manages to pass Madame Kaji's test rather easily without so much getting touched because he jacks off. Mission accomplished. Now she can go to Mizu as a geisha like she always planned. Remember this scene from when the episode starts? Yeah, the Chekhov's gun shot and we now know why it came to be. Mizu accepts this last drink but before she sips, offers her to partake in it out of courtesy and my god you could cut the tension with a knife as Mizu was mocking Taigen and she took it all choosing not to react since turns out once again Princess Akami disguise fails her as Mizu remembers her from that brief scene she saw in episode 1. She easily subdued and Mizu wonders why she chose to forgo everything on a silver platter and side with a piece of shit like Taigen. She leaves Ringo with her as she goes to fulfill her earlier mission of killing Madame Kaji's former couture, Kinuyo. She carefully stalks the whole build. Mizu stealthily invades the premise and finds her way into Kinuyo's chambers where she gives the signal to identify that she was sent by Madame Kaji before eventually slapping her neck and giving her a swift death. This perhaps was Mizu's most painful killing and it clearly overwhelmed her. As promised, Kaji gives her the exact location to Fowler's place and she retires into her chambers where she frees Princess Akemi and tells her to fuck off. Just as she was escaping, a boy saw her and she was about to kill him or chose to spare him and told him to also fuck off and alert everyone of the killing. Remember that boy? Yeah, stupid piece of shit snitched on her and got Goro killed. Bosamata ordered a genocide on the whole brothel. Okay, this episode has a lot of cross-cutting, so bear with me. Episode starts off with a puppet play narration of an ancient warrior. The narration cross-cuts with the end of the previous episode where Mizu is fighting Bosamata soldiers. The narrator vividly tells us how Mizu hatred and disdain for humanity made her into who she was. Mizu takes the whole brothel into quick shelter underground for cover and tells Ringo to keep watch as she starts massacring them one by one. However, it's not as easy as she thought. This isn't one of those jobbers. These are highly trained soldiers. We get to see the narrator's continue narration of the ancient roman warrior okay at this point i don't even know if he actually meant mizu but the story is good not gonna lie in this dream or flashback montage cross-cutting with the narrative speech we see mizu late teen adult life apparently her mother wasn't dead she stumbled upon her on a bridge while she was on the verge of death after an altercation with some bandits yeah come on this is really weird she just stumbled upon him out of nowhere i mean uh, come on 
Her mom took her in and was raising her again as her daughter till she was fully healed to the point that she even found suitors for her. She was quickly wed to Henry Cavill looking guy who not gonna lie was really good hearted because he didn't even try piping her on the first day. Cross cut back to the brothel. Miz is still trying to fend them off despite her lethal injuries. But Ringo and Princess Akemi do a good job of their own holding them off. And then we cross cut to Mizu in a narrow corridor versus these jobbers. And then that was some epic old boy shit. Again shout out to the animators we love you all. I can't stress this enough these animators oh my god you people need some pay raise flashback we get to see mizu have a really good marriage though she tried getting divorced by doing everything like adding too much spice she later grew fond of him and even helped around the chores and all they had this wild horse kai who they managed to tame together back to the brothel in the present day mizu was almost getting choked out by a bandit while princess akemi came to rescue her mizu and her husband ended up bonding and falling in love with each other over time mizu manages to tame kai the wild horse and two of them ride horses together Mizu ended up consummating her marriage finally and this cross cuts to her coming to in present day at the brothel saving Akemi from near death. She has a really hard time fighting them off. Mizu tells her husband how she had to pose as a boy in order to escape the people looking for her. Her husband has started to show herself for who she really is, no hiding nothing. Turns out he was also a weapon expert, specifically with the Naginata and he trained together with her. We get to see one of the coolest and then we see one of the coolest training montages. I don't know how much you can say this but everyone who worked on this show from the storyboard artist to the animators brought the a game you can actually feel it in this episode the spanning session turned into a serious fight and henry cavill was easily overpowered by her wife and ended up saying you are a monster you are a monster you are a monster does everyone in this show have some fragile ego when they get clobbered by a bitch? Their relationship was getting shaky and she was getting desperate to do anything to win him back until she had a bunch of hitmen coming towards their homestead. Apparently someone tipped them off about her whereabouts since she was a wanted outcast at this time. From a distance she had Henry Cavill on a horse. She thought he was here to help her but unfortunately he was the one who tipped them off. Raged and angered she went berserk on everyone. The betrayal was too much and, and lit this unreal beast inside her. Cross that to her massacring the boss Hamata's henchmen in present day without killing the bounty hunters who came for her. I don't know man you really just gotta see this fight for yourself. She manages to kill most of them. Boss Hamata now armyless is ambushed by Madam Kaji and gang. Cross cut to her past and you see Henry Cavill cowering back to her. To her and her mom all blaming each other on who sold her out. Henry Cavill slices her mom's throat and then Mizu throws a knife killing him and that right there was how she lost all her family. Ringo comes to check back to his master and congratulates her on defeating Irvin and confesses his first kill to which Mizu says you want to be like me don't hide from the dark the Tokunoku clan royal guard finally catch up to princess Akemi to retrieve her back to the castle Akemi begs Mizu to help her but she chooses to look the other way and ignore her Ringo is disappointed by her negligence and calls her out then gives her back the bell she handed him in episode 1 to say he doesn't he doesn't want anything to do with her as she is no samurai but an the unreal yeah, this is really the one word she didn't fight getting called, apparently. And the final shocking twist comes at the end of the episode where it turns out Princess Akemi was watching the play as entertainment to her. So this part I'm really confused. I'm not sure if this is the present or the future. I don't know. I really do not know. Now alone. Mizu is at the foot of the hills that shelter Abija Fowler. She says a quick prayer but is distracted by the words of Ringo. Mizu enters the basement as she was instructed and she finds her ways through the crypts which are creepy as hell because a lot of dead bodies of even babies lay laid around. She rushes her way through it and makes it to the end of the door where she picks a lock. Apparently this triggers a trap and a gush of water engulfs the whole place making her submerged in water and she has to find a way to get a breathable space. Now she's discreetly finding her way through the castle and boy isn't she one of those lucky motherfuckers every single action leads to another reaction and the guards finally become aware of existence and sound the alarm at the top of the castle Abijah Fowler is having some guests in his chambers and talking about a gun deal since remember he's a gun trader. Plan is to conquer the shogun castle with guns since he sees knives and arrows as inferior. All he wants is power. The meeting is interrupted when someone informs them that Mizu is there. Haiji Shindo abandons the meeting and is eager to see how it all unfolds. Trap after trap after trap. Mizu bypasses them all getting injured over and over until she reaches at the end of one of the checkpoints and is greeted with more jobbers. A sword is stuck on the wall since she used it to jump the hurdles okay i know i've said this so many times now you're probably tired of hearing it but this 
fight scenes damn this right here this was one of the best this is actually my favorite the camera angles the movement the block in the sequences shout out to the animators again the funniest part this one joba who was paired willingly helps her retrieve her sword back without saying any word i mean it was just hilarious severely bruised and battered her next stop is the kitchen she quickly finds an ice bucket and does the ice bucket challenge sorry i mean uh. she eases the pain on a badly wounded foot by dipping it in as she scours the room she sees the periscope where haiji shindo was watching haiji gasps at fowler and tells him to send his giant to which haiji responds to use the flowers to turns out said flowers with some form of hypnosis psychedelic drug and that follows was mizu being on some mega trip with a swarm of monkeys attacking her she uses a dynamite stick she stole from one of the jobbers earlier to blast through the floor and get some clarity in her senses away from all the flowers at this point i still don't know if it's the flowers making her high or she was actually fighting a horde of enclosed zombies but this was trippy to watch and scary too at the end of it all she stumbles upon taigen locked in one of the dungeons clinging onto dear life she drags him out of the cage and manages to go a floor high at the castle until boop, the giant is seen and then uh we get another cool fight scene <laughs> you know you, you know what i'm about to say she manages to defeat the giant by blowing him to smithereens by another dynamite she conveniently had in her pockets when she comes to she sees the mess around her and taigen was about to fall off a cliff with rubble around him but she manages to save him once again it's getting really weird at this point these two people are supposed to be hating each other but protect each other every chance they get mizu manages to climb all the way up to where abija follow office is and makes a dramatic entrance This is shot lived as a bigger follower was already aiming at her with his shotgun and fires at her breaking her sword. Fowler easily overpowers both of them since they were all weak and beaten up. He sees the mark on her arms and immediately knows it had something to do with Violet which leads to him clobbering her like Batman does to a street litter. Mizu manages to escape by grabbing Tiger and jumping off the roof with him into an ice bug she barely manages to crawl up to the water surface when just as she was drowning she sees a big shadowy figure above the water to save her my fucking goodness the plot conveniences this show has the most i've ever seen <laughs> Ringo is knocking on a door. Behind him is Mizu and Taigen. He's calling for help. Turns out it was Swordmaster's place. Yeah, now Ringo knows about that too. <laughs> we then cut to a scene. A bitch of all bidding farewell to his now former castle on his way to Edo. We see a montage of them going city to city, piping everyone in their path and even pass by Madame Haji's brothel. In between a fellatio scene, They openly discuss their plans on how they plan to dethrone the shogun and Ito clan. From his exposition, we learn the weapons of are two days away. Shindo leaves his presence and goes to write a letter to an anonymous recipient, basically telling him everything Fowler said about the weapons. So the plan is to intercept the guns before they reach Edo. Back at the Tokonuku clan homestead, Princess Akemi is slowly planning for the wedding. She's still pissed about it. Our first introduction to Master Takayoshi is him literally killing princess akemi's pigeon with an arrow for sport his demeanor is odd and ruthless he doesn't speak a word but ladies accompany akemi bragging about how much of a psycho he is seki tries comforting her by challenging her to a game they used to play when she was a kid throughout the game he tries explaining the structure she's in see akemi hates the idea that women should be treated as property she wants to forge her own path and choose who to marry back to swordmaster place mizu comes to ringo is still pissed at, at her former actions cut back to tokunoku madam kaji is in town to attend the wedding when suddenly princess akemi spots her from her career she goes to say hi this is actually a blessing in disguise as kaji gives akemi a much needed pep talk about taming men in this case master takayoshi his ruthless husband to be so mizu and swordmaster have a brief chat she wants eiji to repair her broken blade but he declines when he saw the darkness and hatred in her pissed off she decides to do it alone which she fails she lacks the patience and discipline she wants had tagen comes later during the day to bring her some dumplings to cheer her up one thing led to another and they started playfully sparring until mizu ended up on top of her the awkward 5 second made this giga chad wanna be so bricked and damn was that awkward i mean who the hell gets a boner for someone you wanna kill obviously by now he knows she's a chick so at least it ain't gay mizu breaks the awkwardness by telling him akemi is getting married to takayoshi ito pissed tagen wants to go stop it but mizu tells her about four Fowler's plan to attack Edo's castle and kill the shogun. Tegan is pissed that she knows the plan or but didn't do anything about it. He swears vengeance for his failed marriage and for Mizu's 
and for me this selfishness say the five times back at the castle formalities between the two houses are exchanged and the bride is given a shitload of weird foods to try out horse semen for fertility a fox brain for wisdom pigs poop for vitality whatever that means the, but the weirdest was when the husband takayoshi gave her the pigeon he earlier shot down to eat it well not even the feathers were gone and damn this guy is so psychotic back at the swordmaster's crib Mizu is overlooking a cliff and thinking what to do next when Eiji approaches her and gives her a pep talk by insisting she is no monster and he enjoyed making swords with her. This sparks a new sense of hope since for once nobody sees her like a monster. An unreal. So Mizu starts to reforge a broken zanpakuto. Takayoshi gets her two similar looking pigeons as an apology for killing hers and making her eat it. And this pisses her off. She storms out of her room and bitch slaps him for being a mega psycho douchebag. And this is where the twist happens. Turns out Master Takayoshi wasn't a dickhead by nature, but it was his evil mom controlling everything he did. And the main reason why he never spoke was because he was a stammerer. Damn, talk about a swerve. Remorsefully, she apologizes for smacking him and they start bonding. Back to Mizu. We see her tattoo her whole body in readiness for some sword making ritual. Okay, look, at this point, I don't even know half of the things that happen and why. We cross out to Akemi getting piped by the new simp boy husband and damn, the animators. The goddamn animators. I don't even love us, I think, enough, but damn. Tease in the chat for the animators. Anyway, next scene, we at the docks on Edo where the weapons from Abija Fallow were supposed to be intercepted, and guess what? Nothing is there. He Heiji Shindo was just reading the delivered letter about the bad news when Fowler budged in. Turns out Fowler was five steps ahead of him, and he had modified the designs of the guns in order to smuggle them across the field from where the weapons were. Master Chiba, the one Shindo was in communications with, were all executed alongside everyone involved in the theft by the guns in Fowler's presence. This all foils his plans and now he is forced to obey Abija Fowler. Luckily Fowler didn't know that Shindo was the mastermind. Back at Swordfather's place, Mizu bids a farewell, not in good terms with Ringo, and together they set out for the mission. However, we aren't really sure if she finished making that new sword. At the castle, Princess Akemi fires all of the workers employed by Master Takayoshi's evil mom, who are really just there to spy on her, and instead make an offer to buy out every one of Miss Kaji's high profile foes for an outrageous fee five times by the way, including this mean bitch. Miss Kaji agrees and slowly things seem like they're going good for her. Until out of guilt, one of the maids break down and start crying. She spills to everyone, including Princess Akemi and her dad about the looming impending attack from Abija Fowler and how they got guns and shit. And oh boy, the biggest mother of all plot twist happens. Turns out Akemi's father was in on the deal to kill the Shogun Ito. Just after she spills everything, he shoves her off the balcony as she falls to her death. Brandon Stark and Jamie Lannister style. Akemi's father locks his daughter away for fear she'll ruin the plan. Turns out this coup was a long time coming. Carefully calculated plan and boy is this getting interesting. Alright, we're at the final episode so let's do a quick mini recap within this recap. Mizu traveled three villages looking for Fowler, fought everyone in a path mysteriously surviving in some damn right impossible situations. We learned her backstory, lost her sword, regained her apprentice Ringo after briefly falling out, liberated a brothel town from a tyrant, has survived Fowler once and is stupidly going to fight him again with no plan and almost got piped by a sworn enemy. Damn, she really needs to get laid if she survives this episode. Taigan aka Giga Chad Wannabe has taken the most L's in this show so far, lost his wife to be, his dojo status and all his friends got captured tortured and then rescued and is now on his way to save the shogun alongside winning his bride back oh and he still wants a rematch lol princess akira lost her husband to be after she got piped got digmatized and went village to village looking for her became a hoe in a brothel and crossed paths with mizu killed someone for the first time was forced back to royalty and is now married to a stammering simp her stupidity to save the kingdom got herself captured. Ringo, he was useless at first, slowly becoming useful to the plot and Mizu by watching out for her and accepting her for who she is. Had a brief falling out with Mizu after seeing her dark nature. Someone was there at the right place and the right time to save her from drowning. <coughs> lazy writing. And takes her to Swordmaster. He's now back to being her entrusted apprentice. Basically, his story revolves around Mizu. Anyway, we all now caught up with the main character story arcs. Now back to the recap. So final episode starts with a kid Mizu on her mother's graveyard vowing her revenge against all who attacked and killed her. Cut back to modern day, Mizu and Ringo are overlooking the Shogunate from the outskirts of the city going over the plan to kill Fowler. Ringo asks her if she is planning on saving the Shogun to which she says, Not my concern. Only his death matters. Which is a pretty on point solid response if you ask me. They get ready to attack. 
Then we cut to the castle and Master Takayoshi and his brother are awaiting to meet Fowler, which he does show up with a sack of money. However, he's really pissed that the Shogun never shows up in person and Ola sends someone on his behalf and Ola sees him around outside the castle in the fields and not inside the castle like the other elders. He also asks about the Spring Matsuri and how every prominent people is invited and he should be a part of it. But again, he gives the same generic answer. It would be difficult. Remember guys, because of Abija's fouler illegal gun trade, he made the Shogun very rich, like literally the second richest man in the world, though he feels like he is owed something at the very least. But at this point, his mind is already made up and the coup is imminent. Next, we finally get to see the Shogun and his wife. Remember how this evil bitch? Everyone in the Shogun it is literally just kissing us, one upping each other with gifts. Back inside the castle, Mizu finally manages to enter the castle and the first room she ends up in is Madame Kaji's. I mean, come on. The coincidences in this show, seriously. She's still salty of how she let Akemi get captured by the royal guards earlier. However, she realizes both Akemi and her loyal maids haven't gotten back since seeing her father. So she figures out something's wrong. We then cut to Akemi who's now locked up and her father narrates to her how he plans on being the next shogun. Gets his daughter Mari to the shogun's eldest son who is next in throne. Have the current shogun and family killed by an external force. However, daughter is spared making her husbandless which leads to him stepping in as the shogun as per Edo era Japanese law. Pretty solid plan if you ask me. Until... Saki comes in to rescue her since he heard about the invasion, makes a quick job of rescuing Akemi until he stopped at the corridors and out of nowhere, I know I'm getting tired of this too. Mizu comes and slices them all, cut back to Ringo trying to fend off any other job or guard who comes his way until Tegan arrives to help them out. Yeah, he had time to dress up as one of the guards. Tegan plans is to warn the Shogun of the impending attack to redeem himself and also because he's still a samurai at heart. So together Tegan and Ringo head into the castle head first just like how Mizu will do. But that was short lived however they managed to beg not to be killed and demand an audience with the Shogun who sees it all and allows it. He gives him the warning of the impending attack and one of the guards looks to confirm and true to his word Fowler is seen at a distance with a massive army marching through the street. A defense plan is immediately put in motion and Taigan is honored to fight alongside the Shogun for his loyalty. Also, he meets Akemi's husband for the first time. At the entrance of the castle, it's the Shogun's army with the swords and arrows versus Abija's father's army with guns. And I think you can all guess how it went. They easily advance from level to level, killing every guard on sight. And it's just so pathetic to see him win with so much ease as he says it. In the matter of the death of civilizations, it comes down to technology. We invented worse first. Not fair, but here we are. That's something new to hear, fucking colonialists. Fowler finally reaches where Shogun and gang were hiding and after some good old cliche monologuing of his plan, he shoots the Shogun point blank on his forehead. Lord Mori commits seppuku honorably and that's when he was about to execute the sons. Yeah, and yeah, just when I was about to execute his sons, yeah, I'm, I'm seriously not gonna finish it. Ah. Mizu comes out of nowhere again at the right place in the right angle to slit the Shogun just before he fires. Lazy writing. You know, I think I'll have to make a video about this at the, at one point. Cause no freaking way this keeps happening over and over and no one else is getting bored by it. Let's put a pin on that. Mizu chases after Fowler and Taigen, remains behind and looks around to see if they're all dead when he discovers Heiji Shindo was playing possum. In an epic moment of giga chardness, he says this before killing him. He will kill you with a sword. Unbelievable, they managed to redeem this guy. Taigen catches up to Mizu who was chasing after Fowler and we get this cool Mexican, sorry, Japanese standoff. The funny part, Mizu probably doesn't know how to use the gun so she holds it like a sword and, <laughs> and I mean look. Surprisingly, Fowler can actually put up a fight and he overpowers them before escaping again. Taigen is injured. Mizu tells her to stay back since it's a fight before leaving off. Mizu and Fowler fight for a while before she throws a candle and a flame engulfs the whole room. Scratch that, the whole castle, like seriously, one candle cost all this. You gotta wonder how flammable these houses are, I mean. Seki and Akemi try fleeing away and blocking them, from reaching until Seki is shot and dies in Akemi's arms and tells her she's finally free. The sons are now fleeing through the chambers and now that his father's dead, the mother is at his ears telling him what to do and who to backstab as he lets the lords burn down cause they also his father get killed. Akemi and Taigen finally catch up to each other, he wants to run and be happy with her. She wants to stay 
and that right there cements her legacy this season. Ringo watches the village band from afar wishing he could help his master Mizu but all he can do is hope. Mizu on the other hand keeps fighting Fowler and goes berserk. Fowler realizes that all along she was his bastard which again both ain't sure since her mom was, was gangbanged. She tells them to give location of the other two remaining whites. Since if you can't remember correctly, she killed Violet early in the season. So currently three remain. The other three are Skeffington and Rutley and of course Fowler. When she was holding him at knife point at his neck, Fowler out of desperation reveals this bitch wasn't even his mother all along. She was a paid maid. Fowler knew about her more than she ever even did and her actual real mother may be alive. He argued that he needs to be alive if she wants to know everything and name drops the city of London. We cut to the now shogun and royal family overlooking the city barn. Yeah, from that one candle, remember? Princess Akemi sneaks up on them behind and assures them that she's fine and so is her father, which we don't know yet since he was locked up, remember? We cut back to Ringo and Swordmaster informing him that he waited for Rizzo but she never came back all looking sad and gloomy. And the final shot is a Abija Fowler locked inside a cage as it pans out. We reveal that he's on a boat controlled by Mizu who has fully embraced her boy persona and they're probably on their way to sweet London. Yeah, so there you have it. 8 episodes, 40 minutes each of pure cinema and good old revenge from an edgy, emo, angsty, Aaron wannabe MC. Yes, please watch Blue Samurai and come back here and tell me if it was worth it. Thanks for sticking around. Please consider subscribing if you haven't and help me share this video. Until then, Kwaheri. Oh